Hey guys, welcome to lesson 8.5, factoring x squared plus bx plus c. So this is our standard form for a quadratic trinomial. Our objective for today is that I can factor trinomials of the form x squared plus bx plus c. And you can write some trinomials in the form x squared plus bx plus c as the product of two binomials. So the process for factoring is this. First, we need to identify <clears throat> two key things. What is our product, which will be our last term, our C term? We put that here. And we want to find factors or, or our factors of 24 that are going to add up to and give us a sum of our B term. So what are my factors of 24? Well, we've got 1 and 24, and the sum of those two is 25. So that can't be it. What are my factors for, uh, well, if I try 2? 2 and 12, the sum of that is 14. Getting closer, not there yet. Our, last one, our next one, well, let's try 3 and 8. Those are factors of 24. 8 plus 3, 8, 9, 10, 11. Ah, there we have our sum. So the factored form of x squared plus 11x plus 24 is x plus 3 and x plus 8. Now, how, you know, you might say, Mr. Boland, I'm not sure if my answer is correct. Is there any possible way that, there, that we can check our answers to make sure that we've got the perfect factoring for this trinomial? And you know what? There is. And it's something that you learned a couple days ago. What we can do is you have your factors. Now let's, let's foil it. x times x is x squared. x times 8 is plus 8x. 3 times x is plus 3x. 3 times 8 is plus 24. Combine like terms, you have, uh, sorry, you have x squared plus 11x plus 24. Is that what we started with? Sure does look like it. All right. So you can see the reason we look, we're looking for our factors of 24 because we know that last term gets multiplied and ends up as 24. So we know our last term has to be factors of 24. And then the sum is our outer and our inner being added together. So the 8x and the 3x, that's where we get that 11 from, okay? All right, let's take a look at letter B. So we've got factors of eight that are gonna add up to six. So factors of eight, well, we have one and eight, that gives us a sum of nine, so that's not it. Uh, well, then we've got 2 and 4. That gives us a sum of 6. So our term is x plus 2 and x plus 4. Now, some people may ask the question, does it matter which order they go in, whether x plus 2 comes first or second? And the answer is that since we're using the commutative property of multiplication, it doesn't matter what order they're in. Uh, we are multiplying, so it's going to end up coming up the same. So if you wrote x plus 4, x plus 2, that would be perfectly acceptable. Okay. So I want you guys to try letters C and D on your own, and then I will go over them. All right, so letter C, we have factors of 20 that add up to 9. Factors of 20, our sum is 9. So we've got 1 and 20. That's 21. 2 and 10, got to be it. Uh, no, that's 12. Well, and then there's the other factor. There's 4 and 5. 4 plus 5 is 9. So my terms are x plus 4 and x plus 5. Those are my two terms. Okay. Letter D, we have x squared plus 7x plus 12, so we've got a positive 12 for our factors, our products, and we're looking for that they add up to 7. So factors of 12, we've got 1 and 12, which is 13. We have 2 and 6, which is 8. 
And then you've got 3 and 4, which is 7, and that's what we're going for. So our terms are x plus 3 and x plus 4. Okay. And again, you can always double check these answers. This is one of those sections where there is absolutely no reason why you should be getting a problem wrong because you can FOIL it and double check to make sure that your work is correct. There's no reason to get any of these questions wrong on a test. All right, now problem number two, factoring when B is less than zero and C is greater than zero. So our product is positive and our sum is negative. So what does that tell us about our factors? Well, if they're gonna multiply and be positive, but add together and be negative, then both of our factors must be negative numbers because a negative times a negative is going to be a positive. So we're gonna be looking for what factors of 16 give us a sum of negative 10. And we know that they need to be negatives. So uh, negative one and negative 16, that adds up to negative 17. Well, my next term, we've got negative two and negative eight. Those are factors of 16. And they add up to negative 10. So my two, two binomials are gonna be x minus two and x minus eight. Okay, next up we have uh, factors of 27 that are going to give us a sum of negative 12. Well, my factors are negative of 27. I've got negative 1 and negative 27. That's negative 28. That's not what we want. Uh, well, what about negative 3 and negative 9? That gives us a positive 27 when we multiply. And those add up to negative 12. So we have x minus 3 and x minus 9. Okay. Next up, letter C and D. I want you guys to do those two. Try them on your own and factor it. And then I'll go through the answers. So y squared minus 6y plus 8. So we're looking for factors of 8 that are going to add up to negative 6. So we have one, negative 1 and negative 8. That adds up to negative 9. Negative 2 and negative 4, that adds up to negative 6. So x minus 2, x minus 4. Okay. Next up, letter D, we have x squared minus 11x plus 30. So we're looking for factors of 30 that add up to negative 11. So I've got negative 1 and negative 30. That gives me negative 31, not 11. Negative 2 and negative 15. That gives us negative 17. We're getting closer, but we're not there yet. Well, negative 3 and negative 10. That sum is negative 13. Getting closer again. Well, what else is a factor of, five and, of uh, 30? Well, it's negative 5 and negative 6, which gives us negative 11 that we're going for. So it's x minus 5, x minus 6. Okay. All right, moving on to problem number 3, factoring when c is less than 0. So our c term is going to be negative in our uh, setup here. So we know that one of our factors has to be positive, one of our factors has to be negative. So one of the things that we can look at when we, are, when we see, so our products are negative 18, but our sum is also negative. So that means the greater of the two numbers has to be the negative number for us to get a negative seven when we add them together. So factors of negative 18, well, we know we got one and negative 18 which would give us negative 17. Two and negative nine gives us a negative seven. That's what we want. You can see nine is greater than two and the nine is negative. Negative seven, okay? 
So we've got x plus 2, x minus 9. You know what, I guess in letter C in the pre previous one, I used X instead of Y. Just saw that. Okay, anyways, letter B, X squared minus X minus 20. So we're looking for products that add up to negative 20, or factors of negative 20, that add up to negative 1. So we've got 1 and negative 20, that gives us negative 19. We've got 2 <clears throat> and negative 10. That gives us negative 8. Getting closer. 4 and negative 5. That gives us a sum of negative 1. So we have x plus 4, x plus, or minus 5. x plus 4, x minus 5. <clears throat> Okay, I want you guys to try letters C and D on your own and then we're gonna go over it. So letter C, we've got n squared plus nine n minus 36. So our factors of negative 36 and we have a sum that is a positive nine. So for this one, the greater of our two values has to be the positive number, not the negative number. So product, or factors of negative 36. Well, we've got negative 1 and 36. That's 35. We've got negative 2 and 18. That's negative, or sorry, positive 16. Negative 3 and 12. That gives us our 9. So our factors, x minus 3, x minus plus 12. <clears throat> okay. Letter D, we're looking for factors of negative 21 that give us a sum of negative 4. So again, our sum is negative, so the greater of the two values needs to be a negative number. So factors of 21, well we've got 1 and negative 21, that gives us negative 20. 2, no, we got 3 and negative 7, that gives us a negative 4. So we have x plus 3, x minus 7. x plus 3, x minus 7. All right, next up, problem four, applying factoring trinomials. A rectangle's area is x squared minus x minus 72. What are the possible dimensions for that rectangle? And use factoring to find them. So we're looking for products of negative 72 that are going to add up to negative 1. Well, what are my factors of negative 72? Um, we can do a 1 and a negative 72, but we know that's, I mean, that's way far away. What two numbers multiply and give us 72 and are really close together? I know, we've got negative eight and nine. Wait, that gives us a sum of positive one. Well, if that's positive one, what if I just switch the signs? And I have a positive eight and a negative nine. Now I have a sum of negative one. So our factors are x plus eight, that's one side length, and x minus 9 is the other. All right. Letter B, I want you guys to try on your own. Uh, the area of a picture frame is given by the trinomial x squared plus 6x minus 16. The length of the frame is x plus 8. What is the width of the picture frame? Well, we're looking for products of negative 16 that uh, add up to 6. So our products of negative 16, we've got negative 1 and 16, positive number, so we know the greater value has to be positive. So that's 15. We've got negative 2 and 8, that gives us 6. So we've got x plus 8, x minus 2. Here's a hint, guys. If I give you one of the side lengths already, 
you already know what one of your factors is going to be. You just need to figure out what times, neg or times 8 is going to give you a negative 16. All right, so if one of the terms is already given to you, um, it's a little bit of a cheat for you. All right, now problem five deals with factoring a trinomial with two variables. Now, if you'll notice when we did our, um, when we did our problems before, I never included the x value in uh, our factors. And that's because it was just kind of implied. We, we knew that was gonna show up in our first term. So in this case, we're not gonna put the m in our middle term because we know where that comes from. It comes from the two m's that are in the front in our uh, factors. So we know we're gonna have an m right there. We also know we're gonna have another m right there. So we know where those come from already. We don't need to deal with those right now. So we're looking for factors of negative 27n squared that are gonna add up to 6n. Okay, so factors of negative 27. I've got a 1n and a negative 27n. That gives me a sum of negative 26n. I also could use the factor 3n and negative 9n. Well, 3 plus negative 9 is negative 6n. Ah, that's right, I needed a positive to be greater. So that would be negative 3n and 9n would give us the 6n we're trying for. So we have m minus 3n and m plus 6n. Okay. Letter B or A as it says. All right x squared minus xy minus 6y squared, okay? So our product, our factors need to come out of negative 6y squared, and they need to add up to negative y. So my factors, I've got negative 1y and 6y. That gives me a sum of 5y. Negative 2y and 3y, that gives me a sum of positive y. So I just flip it, 2y and negative 3y gives us the negative y sum. So our factors are x plus 2y, x minus 3y. Okay, so at this point, it's that point of the evening, rate your level of understanding of this lesson from one to four, make sure you're being honest with it. Write down any questions or confusions that you may have over this lesson so we can address them in class tomorrow. And make sure you fill out your summary of what this lesson was about and how you can go about factoring uh, equations that are in the form x squared plus bx plus c. Okay, that's the end of our lesson for tonight. Have a great night.